Frankie, how many? Two or three? Two, two. Give me two, that's good. I gotta walk like uh, Travolta, man. <laughs> gotta walk normal. Come on. <laughs> New York is the birthplace of pizza in America, as most people know. With over 2,000 pizzerias, there's wood, coal, gas-fired pies, slices and squares, Neapolitan, and more. Pizza culture here is so strong, you could even take a tour to learn about the history of this seemingly basic food. Scott Wiener, who runs his own pizzeria tour company, is the most knowledgeable person in this field by far. False alarm. This is not the first pizza. This is the test. Look at this. Ah! It's hot. <laughs> So many people come to New York to eat pizza, and there's so many stories about where all these great pizzerias came from. Help us break this down. When people come to New York, they totally understand that the city has a special relationship with pizza. There's a deeper story that I know when I first found out that there was such a thing as like a place that calls itself the first pizzeria in America, right. my mind was blown. I was like, right. there's history? Yeah, like, how is that pizza? documented? How cool is that, that this food has a history? The story is pretty similar for all these places. Like, people had ovens where they were being used for bread. Bakers are baking pizza in the beginning of the day as just a means of doing a couple of different dirty jobs with the oven. And they're also using that dough to get rid of leftover scrap ingredients. And then suddenly you have this product, which happened in Naples. It happened in Italy. It was just pizza with scrap. What I think a lot of people that are really into New York pizza culture sort of understand, and that is that Lombardi's is the first pizzeria in America, and then there's sort of this New York pizza family tree that branches off from Lombardi's and is responsible for some of the greatest pizzerias in New York. Is that true? Maybe. <laughs> okay, here, here's, okay, here's the most accurate way I can explain the entire family tree. Okay. Lombardi's opens in 1905. 1905 is when they received the first mercantile license to run a pizzeria, which is not a license that I can find or has really ever existed. And then Totono's opens up in 1924. Okay. And Totono's seems to have a as much a claim to New York pizza supremacy historically as Lombardi's. Right. Now, there's some controversy because some people say that, oh, well, he was the pizza maker and Lombardi was and just, you know, we also man. don't know. Maybe there was another place that opened no and then closed and nobody got a picture of it. The answer to my question is kind of confusing because there are so many people that have claimed to work at Lombardi's without actual concrete evidence. Here's the most likely story. Lombardi's was the first licensed pizzeria in America where Gennaro Lombardi and Anthony Perro worked. Perro then branched off and opened the Tono's in 1924. In 1929, John Sasso, who may or may not have worked at Lombardi's, opens John's. The story gets even more confusing when Patsy's in Harlem comes into the picture. Pasquale Patsy Lincieri opens Patsy's in 1933, after also maybe working at Lombardi's. His nephew, Patsy Grimaldi, opens up Patsy's Pizzeria under the Brooklyn Bridge in 1990, which then, four years later, changes his name to Grimaldi's. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's, it's, but that stuff doesn't even really matter. What we know is, Lombardi's was the first documented pizzeria in New York City. In 1905, Gennaro Lombardi started serving pizza to local factory workers out of his grocery store in Spring Street. Due to its popularity, the store quickly evolved into a full-fledged pizzeria and continued churning out coal-fired pizzas till the mid-80s when it closed. Luckily, Gennaro Lombardi III and John Brescio, his childhood friend, reopened this iconic restaurant in 1994. Gennaro Lombardi is responsible for bringing pizza as we know it here to America. And he got a lot of the pizzerias started because he, he had them working here. So you remember Gennaro? You remember the original? Yes, and my father used to leave me here when I was six, seven years old. And I would bother him, throw dough balls at him <laughs> with, with his grandson. And uh, that's who opened this place. When we reopened, him and the grandson, I'm the worker. That's how far back I go with pizza, and that's how I know good pizza. 
It sounds like Gennaro was a champion of the neighborhood. He was, and this was all Italian people living here. Soho was where all the factories were. So a lot of guys would stop there in the morning because Lombardi's was open 22 hours a day back then. Wow. They would stop on their way to work, get a pie wrapped in brown paper and string, and then reheat it in the oven that kept the place warm at work. And they had their lunch. Get out of here. One of the things that defines Lombardi's is the coal oven. What is so special about a coal-fired pizza? Let's take coal versus wood. With a wood-burning oven, it goes up real high, and as the wood burns away, the fire goes down. With coal, it burns more steady, so you got a constant heat. A good pizza has to have high heat because the inside will be light and airy with all the nooks and crannies. The toppings, they'll cook in two minutes. It'll be juicy. That's the key to a great pie. That's the key to a great pizza. Can I invite you to eat some pizza here? Come on in. Wow. This looks good. Ooh, this looks great. Enjoy your slice of history. Okay? I will. That's exactly what you said. You could tell that it's cooked fast. The bottom of it is um, crispy, but yet the top is still moist. And you can definitely taste that it's from a coal oven and not uh, from a wood oven, definitely. Quality always shows. Right. Always shows up, right. whether it's in the person or in food. I'm around pizza every day. I love it, <laughs> OK? I love eating it. nice out here. I remember, like, the last time I came out here, you had to, like, dodge broken glass everywhere in the beach. <laughs> here we are on Coney Island on a scorching hot day. It's beautiful. We're all sweating. And when you're in Coney Island, you think of the beach. You think of hot dogs. Mm. Really good. You want the other half of this? But when you are in Coney Island and you are talking about pizza, you think of Totono's. Not only is it one of the country's best pizzerias, but it's a big part of the New York story of pizza. Totono's hasn't changed a bit since 1924, and that's thanks to Anthony Perro's family who's carried on the tradition. Antoinette and Cookie, Perro's granddaughters, have dedicated their lives to the business. The minute I walked in, I was greeted by Antoinette, immediately invited to a birthday party for their longtime friend, Victor. He's like a fixture here. They call him Tiger who also goes by Tiger, and offered a slice of cake. This is truly the definition of a family business. Look what I'm doing. Victor, you're old, Victor. Can we borrow you to sing happy birthday? We'd like to... Oh, you're kidding. Today? Hooray! Come on, Vic, throw it out. Yeah! Oh, wonderful. The only thing that's consistent here is the pizza. Happy birthday, baby doll. There's people coming in the door. We got Victor's birthday going on right now. We have another little girl's birthday. There's pizzas flying out of the oven. And there's a pizza waiting for me. This looks okay. amazing. So now, do you want anything on it? Like cheese, extra cheese, or rum? I'm going to do it just like this. Just like this here. I want you to eat it when it's hot. Wow. It's delicious. The pizza is delicious. Ah, well, I think you're a connoisseur, so I... No, it is. It's different. It's not the same. It has a different quality. Like, the, the dough itself, it's like, it has a little bit more consistency to it. And, like, you could really taste the tomatoes and the cheese and that, like, sharpness. Is there another hard cheese on there besides mozzarella? You're asking a question. That's not allowed here. When you come over there, there's no question. You oh, eat... would you pass that line? You... No more no, questions? No, All right. That's Zip. It. I'm done. <laughs> What does it feel like to be talked about in that light as a legend? Your grandfather literally was the pizzaiolo at Lombardi's, the first pizzeria on the books. My emotions tell. Like, right now, you mentioned grandfather, and I cry because it just stirs up feelings that I can't explain. So he was a baker in Naples, Italy. And he came over on a boat. I think it was the Margarita. And he worked for Lombardi and opened his own pizzeria. And then he came here in 1924, and we are the oldest continuously run family-owned pizzeria in the world. Wow. So we're here in this location, 92 years. Cookie makes fabulous pizza. I Mommy bet. always said that women make the best pizza, but she really is passionate. This place could never survive if it weren't for her. 
She doesn't want any changes, and I have to respect that. This is the infamous cookie, the love of my life. Did you get my card? What card? I sent you a beautiful card. She said she's all talked out. That's about it. <laughs> I mean, we did so many TV shows and everything, and I just keep on saying the same thing all over and all over. And I'm tired of it. <laughs> Are you like your mother and you like your father? I'm like my father. You're like your father? Yeah. And say what you say all the time. Cookie, <laughs> tell us something different. Tell us something nothing that different. you want to get out there. Nothing different. I'm telling you. There's nothing great about different, right? When you got the good old classic, you stick with that. That's it. Do you ever critique the pizza men? I know Mike has been here making pizza forever. Well, I'm confident in Michael now, but yeah. you know, at the beginning, yes. It's hard work. And he's been with you guys for 12 years yeah. now. Yeah. Yay, Mike! Woo! Michael. There he is. She Stop. calls him Michael. She calls him Michael. I love it. I love that oven is beautiful. And it looks like that peel. He's been using that same peel for this for the same hundred years. This oven right here has been making pizza since 1924. The old lady. Honestly, like, until I got comfortable working with the oven, because it's a coal-fired oven, each couple of inches is like a, a, a different temperature, just a whole different feel to it. And you have to basically dance the pie around. And honestly, every day I, I think I'm learning something, even at this stage of the game, you know? The fact that your sister and you were able to carry it on the same uh, level that your father and your grandfather ran it at is, to me, it's like a, it's like every, every father's dream come true, you know? We just keep this going because this is our passion and it's like a constant roller coaster. Yeah. And it's constant fantasy land. And I just love being from Coney Island Baby. That's so awesome. we are the true Coney Island Babies. Michael, did I give you cake? The West Village has so many great pizzerias. When I was in the neighborhood, I decided to call my boy Mark to try some with me. You hungry? Yes, I didn't eat all day. You ready to eat some pizza? I'm ready, let's go. All right, let's do it. You ready to do this? Good. How you been? Fantastic. Yeah. The first stop is John's on Bleecker Street, which is known for its coal fire pots. When was the last time you were in this neighborhood eating pizza? Before I opened my pizzeria. I think the last time I was here, there was probably five names on the wall. <laughs> look at it. <laughs> and, and I've been dying to come back here, so. What to you is like the classic New York pizza? Classic, I mean, going back, I mean, if you go back to the beginning of time, you know, Lombardi's, this place, right. Patsy's in Harlem, a classic cold oven pie. I, and then, you know, that transitioned into the gas oven pie, Joe's, the Farrah's, Prince Street. And now we have all the newcomers, uh, the Neapolitan style. The Neo-Neapolitan. Uh, the Neo yeah. we're, we're getting style. wave two of the Italians. Right, to, you know. right. Beautiful. Enjoy. Oh, good. I've been waiting all day for this. It smells good. What do you look for when you grab a slice of pizza? Uh, the stretch of the cheese. I like, you know, like that right there. Right that there, crack. that crack and that crunch. And usually like the, the little diamond on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Good. It really is. I like the simplicity of it. Cheese and tomatoes. Yeah. That, you know. I mean, that's what you get on this block, right? You just get pizza, you get simple pizza. Like, the crust is amazing. The crust is really good, like, you know? What was your spot in that, in your neighborhood for in slice? Brooklyn, I would have to say Nino's uh, for a traditional slice. Now, it's Joe's. Joe's is the quintessential New York slice. Absolutely, 100%. You agree? You took the words right out of my mouth. All right. And cool. you know what I love about Joe's? It uh -huh. brings me back to my childhood. That was great. That was good, man. Off to Joe's? Let's do it. What do you want to do, Mark? Couple slices? Two? Two slices. So you put red pepper on your slices. On, the, on my slices, red pepper, black pepper on the coal oven. Black pepper on the coal oven. Yep. This guy's a real kind of <laughs> let me tell you. And then you don't use a fork or a knife. You do the fold. It's the old New York fold. See That's how it, it stands up? Mm. I love, this is. Every time. Like you said, the quintessential New York slice. You know what always bothered me was a napkin move. You know when they take when you when you take you uh, the, 
Yeah, for the so, oil. For the oil, and, they, and you put the napkin on top to soak it up? Oh, no, no, I know another napkin. Oh, you, what's the one you're talking about? Give you your thumb in there and then oh, fold it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll stop the oil. Oil, the oil comes up. The white t-shirt. Those are, see, that's the, that's the swaggy guys in yeah. Brooklyn did that. <laughs> so they didn't want to ruin the outfit. You never did that one? I never did that. I'm not a gentleman like look, you, see, Mark. And, and then on. it catches, look, see how it catches all that's the way? That's perfect. Um, what about the stance? You don't know the stance? What's the stance? You, you stand with your feet to the side and you make sure the pizza doesn't drip on your sneakers. Your outfit choice is risky. Both of you. Hey, it's risky, but you no, know but what? No, but see, if you know the rules, you, know you don't have to worry. <laughs> no, you see no oil on my sneakers? Fresh as could be. This is like a New York drive through I like a regular pie when it comes out of the oven, fresh out of the oven. When they reheat it, that's where you get that crispy. Yeah, so that's when it comes really it crispy. It makes it nice and crispy. Sometimes the guys like will heat it up too much, right? Sometimes the guys won't heat it up enough. Then you get the you burn the skin off the roof of your mouth. <laughs> do you do you specify when you order your slice like not too hot? Not too hot. Not too hot. I, I don't like it hot. My, yeah. I got my cousin. He's like, <laughs> he's like eating. He's just like the oil pouring no, no, down the his chin. He's got down. Down. Uh, the next day, oh, I can't eat. I burnt the whole thing from my mouth. <laughs> Here we are, the famous Prince Street. Always a line, I guess. While Prince Street looks like it's been here forever, it actually opened in 2012. The space used to be home to the original Ray's Pizza, one of many Ray's of New York. Prince Street has a good slice, but what you really want here is a square. Uh, two square pepperonis. Is that what you call the spicy Prince Street? Yeah. All right, so we'll do two of those. How's it going? Good, good. Doing good, doing good. How many? We're here for the uh, square slice. The spicy spring. What else? That's a bestseller, right? Thank you so much, man. Thanks, guys. Enjoy, guys. We'll be back. This is New York. You just set up wherever in New York. That's it. You make it work. You set up shop and make it work. The pepperoni is incredible. Yeah, the pepperoni looks sick. New York bacon. <laughs> the Sicilian always takes a back seat to the slice. And if you ask me, it's like the unsung hero of pizza. I think people like, it's because it's a little bit thicker, they're scared of it. But when you actually eat it, it has so many different textures, it's so good. There's nothing like hot pizza in New York on a hot summer night. For someone that's never been to like a New York style slice place, there's very much a ritual for it. When you walk through the door, the first thing that you usually see is a big case full of pizzas, a couple different pies. You'll see a pizza man in the back making pizzas, maybe flipping them in the air. Luigi's on Fifth Ave is quintessential slice. When you walk into it, it's basically a place that's stuck in time. Gio, the owner, has a lot of pride for his family, for his culture. He knows everyone's name. He knows everyone's order. His sisters work with him. When you're a regular at a family place, it feels like you're part of the family. In 1973, Luigi Lanza opened Luigi's with his wife, Theodora. Today, Luigi's children, Gio, Lisa, and Marisa, work hard to honor their parents' legacy by keeping their traditions at the pizzeria alive. And now I see the photo album, and I'm like, perfect. This yeah, you've seen this best. one. I always put this in, because you know what? Without these two people, it wouldn't be here. It wouldn't when, be here. I wouldn't be here, wouldn't have anything to talk about. It just, my whole life, because two people came here just saying we can make it in America. Otherwise, I would have been, I would have been skinny probably. <laughs> my mother came here first. She started working in a sweatshop. She was yeah. making 43 cents an hour. Wow. With $19 a week, it just shows you how, as much as everybody thinks those were the bad times, they were actually the great times. Because in four years, my mother bought a house. My father was working in Italy. He had a mule, so he was somebody. <laughs> that was like the Cadillac of today. Yeah, he had a mule. Yeah, he had the diamond. Did the old <laughs> And these are the pictures I have of my mother going to Italy, marrying him, bringing him here. And then he worked, he worked in the sweatshop also. And he didn't like it, so he went to work in a pizzeria. They saved everything, and then they bought this building. Here's my sister now, my two sisters. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> We've met before. I, I love the way that it's your sister in the front and then it's your other sister in the back cooking. There's nothing better than being with your family, you know? And 
you guys get along together and there's just this positive. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's family. It's family. It's family. There's not a little screaming going on. Something's wrong. I know that this has always been like this. Were you ever tempted to go in the direction that other pizzerias went in? Like, you know, no. the weird pies no. or this and no. that? No. I'm not going to steer away from what I was brought up with. That was it. No. It's what's worked. It's what I was taught. Make it the best I can make it. And the, the people who shine right through and say it's good. How many pizzas do you think you made here? This board is the first board we started with. At the number of pies, this board had over a million pies easily. And if you notice, this is the, my father opened up the store with two boards. This was what it looked like originally. This, I used to do this for my first start. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah. so now, I don't even have to look. It's just, <laughs> I know where it's going to go. That's <laughs> it. Always take my, my father. Get the sauce out from in the middle. No yeah. sauce in the middle. And why is that? It, because it's heavy and it'll stick. When the crust puffs up, everything kind of moves to the center, right? Yeah, exactly. How old were you when you made your first pizza? I was 11 when I started making pies. My first pie for a customer, I'll never forget. I looked back into the kitchen. I said to my father, Papa, not beets. I was 13. He said, you make it. It was only a regular pie, so it's a 16 inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he made me make my first one. Wow. I'll go ahead and I'll make my pizza, and then you, maybe you can give me some tips. Basically, I'm just trying not to touch the crust. Is that your? No, you can touch the crust. Stay, right? stay out of the middle. Don't. That's it. Not push too hard, right? Yeah, don't push hard. So, All right, beautiful. So walk right over, top deck. Top deck. I don't think this is gonna be as round as Gio's. Mine are never round. But I try. When you I'm don't trying. use flour, they never come in round. All right, Frank, you know what we're gonna do now? You're gonna eat one of my slices, I'm gonna have one of your slices that you oh, made, okay? No, 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 that makes me okay. nervous, that <laughs> makes me nervous. All right, let's see how I match stuff. I think I know which one's mine. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, that's for you, Frank. All right. Well, we're gonna go with Frank's pie. Uh-oh. No, this is gonna be good. I already know when it's, listen, I can walk into a pizzeria and look and you see what you did? And you get half. A hundred percent. Perfect. The pizza is so good. It's so easy to chew. It's just like... When it comes to ratio, is that the most important thing for you on the pizza? It's the way... You know, when I say it's in the hands, my hands do it. I just know, okay, I reached my limit. It's like breathing. How, how much in do you inhale? You don't even... It's just I do it, and that's it. I don't know that I've uh, interviewed anyone that's probably made as many pizzas as you. I have no idea how Those many pies. Those that has made probably a million pies on their own. Oh, easily, easily. And it's just, I just love what I do. It's, do you know, it doesn't even feel like I made one. When you do something that you like so much, it's not a job. People don't understand that it's not work for me. I come here to hang out. I mean, you're never bored here. It's like a dream come true. That's it. This, you make it, it's your show. That's it, this is my show. It's done, it's made, the people are happy. Priceless, totally priceless. Pucho, busy? A little bit. You know I'm always busy. You, you, you do good work, you busy. That's it. Well, Lenny's is a staple in Bensonhurst. Yeah. It's underneath the train. Do people like come here and ask you to do the double side? They do. You know what's funny? I had this young boy. He came in. He might have been like 15 years old. He dressed up as Tony Monero for Halloween. And he was like, can you please open the window so can you can give me a double decker? I'm like, how does this kid know what a, what a double decker is? It was, it was hysterical. 